All right, that intro, I worked very hard on that, and I hope that you enjoyed it. It was really to set the mood for this video. And what is this mesh you're looking at, you might ask? Well, this is all of my hiking equipment that I'm going through, and I wanted to give you, my viewers, an inside look into how I get ready to go on an overnight hike on the Appalachian Trail. So you can see all of the equipment that I carry strewn about here in a disorganized way. And in this video, I'm going to go through and show you what I bring and kind of the philosophy behind why I bring certain things and what I do with them when I'm out in the field. So I hope you enjoy. All right, let's take a closer look at the backpack and how I have it configured and what equipment I actually take out with me when I go on an overnight hike. So we'll start out by just going into the main compartment here and taking out some of the stuff so that you can see. Uh, on top, you can see here, and you'll see a lot of these as I unpack this. This is a dry bag, and a recurring theme throughout this will be that I do not want my equipment to get wet. Whether it's in the bag or whether I'm taking it out of the pack, it needs to stay dry. So this is a dry bag, and inside I actually have a pillow that I take with me, and I don't want to have a soggy pillow so it goes in a dry bag when I'm not using it. Likewise, I have a bunch of food here in a dry bag, and this also allows me to hang it up in case I need to make a bear bag. So I'll actually take this and close it up, loop some cord through here, and then hang it over a tree so that a bear can't get inside of it. And you can see here I got a lot of provisions. Uh, it's important to bring some food out given that you're going to be burning a lot of energy. I usually hike for five or six hours each day that I'm out and that burns a lot of calories and it's good to bring more food than you think you'll need in case you have to stay out there uh, another day. This is a thermal bivy. It's also waterproof. You can't really see it here but basically it's just a kind of an elaborate tarp that can zip up like a sleeping bag and it has one side of it coated with a kind of mylar foil so it keeps out moisture and it also can double as an emergency shelter if something were to happen to my tent. Usually I keep this on the bottom of my tent to keep out some of the condensation that will uh, collect on the bottom of the tent and I can also drape it over my sleeping bag uh, for some extra warmth. So just another barrier against moisture. This is my sleeping pad. You can't really see it, but this is an inflatable sleeping pad. And it keeps me off the ground, which is really important, especially if it's cold, because you don't want your body to be in contact with the cold ground because you, you won't last very long. I'm, I mean, at least in terms of comfort, if all of your warmth is going into the cold ground. So this keeps me off the ground, and it also has some uh, kind of mylar foil filling that adds some extra warmth as well. And it's inflatable, so it's pretty comfortable. Going further in here, uh, this is all of my clothing. I keep this yet in another dry bag, because if the clothing is wet, uh, I tend to sweat a lot when I'm out there, or even if I get rained on, I want to be able to put the clothing, the dirty clothing, the wet clothing into a bag so that it doesn't get everything else in here wet, which is bad. This is my tent. I do bring out a tent. Uh, this is actually a quote-unquote two-person tent. It's more like a 1.5-person tent. It's not an ultralight tent, but I like to bring out a solid tent because that's really important especially if the weather is bad. Uh, further down in here you can see my hydration bladder. I've got that set up and I can show you one of the neat things about this is that it actually has 
an inline filter, a water filter. So rather than have to filter the water and then somehow put it in here, I could just dunk this into a mountain stream up in the Georgia foothills. And as I drink through this hose here, uh, this will actually filter any of the contaminants out of the water. So really convenient. My brother actually got me that for Christmas. So that's an overview. Uh, some of the other main things that I take are, this is my tent's footprint or the ground cover that you put down before you actually erect the tent. And this keeps uh, some of the moisture from, or some of the, you know, the, just the dirt and debris from getting on the bottom of the tent just to keep it a little bit cleaner. And if I take this off here, you can see uh, my sleeping bag is right here. I take, given this time of year, it's winter here, it gets pretty cold up in the hills. And this is a uh, rated to 10 degrees uh, down sleeping bag. It's pretty heavy, but it's worth the weight. Uh, it's not good to spend the night being really cold. So that would be all of the all of the main equipment that I bring with me. All right, so here you can see most of the rest of the contents of the pack that I carry. And I'll start here. Uh, these are two towels. This one's larger, this one's smaller. I carry these. Uh, they help with when I get water inside the tent or water on the outside of the tent. It's very foggy and humid and there's a lot of moisture in the air, particularly in the morning up in the Georgia foothills. So whether or not you have a good tent that's secure, you're still going to get moisture inside of it just because it's thick in the air. And this helps deal with that. Uh, it's also useful if my clothing or other equipment gets wet. I have a rain cover for the backpack uh, bandana keeps the sweat out of my eyes. I like to wear that. It makes me look cool too. Uh, rain jacket here. I've tried to use a poncho, but it's really hard to put on a poncho, especially if it's windy. And it's really hard to get it over the top of a backpack without another person's help. So rain jacket's the next best thing. And it's actually a little bit more breathable uh, than a poncho. This is another dry bag that contains the jacket that I bring out and also uh, a hat and some gloves for when it's cold. So moving over here, I have a water bottle. I do bring another water bottle in addition to the bladder that I carry. You can see here that I've got some duct tape around it. Uh, I can use that if I need some duct tape for whatever reason. And then I have a loop that I put through here that allows you to hang the water bottle if you want to maybe attach it. I have some paracord here, which I'll talk more about, but you can attach the water bottle. I've actually used this when you're walking over a, a bridge or something or there's a water source below you. You can kind of lower this down and it's a way to get some water that is maybe not in the best position for you to actually get near, you can attach it with the carabiner to the paracord and lower it down and then haul it up with some water. Uh, this is the camp kit, mess kit that I bring. Bring an extra cup if I wanna drink some instant coffee. And this is what I use to boil water with this uh, camp stove here, which I just screw on top of this uh, butane fuel, and then it has some arms that extend outward, and I put it on top like that. And that is how I make the boiling water that I need to prepare the food that I bring. So over here, I have some of the other equipment that I bring. I mentioned the paracord, so I bring some paracord because it has a number of uses. The main thing I use this for is to actually 
string up uh, bear bag. And so there are black bear in Georgia, particularly where I go hiking on the Appalachian Trail. And as I understand it, they're not really active during the winter, but it's still good practice to keep your food away from your campsite. Um, I did this even when I was in hiking in Florida because they have black bears there as well. So what you do basically is you get, tie one end of this piece of cord to something heavy like a branch or a rock and you throw it over the top of a tall limb and then you catch the side that falls on the other side and string it through this part and then you can just hoist your bag up uh, a little bit taller than your head height and that will keep the bears away from it. So that's what I mean when I say setting up a bear bag. It, you want to set that up a pretty good distance away from your tent and you put everything that might have some kind of fragrance that smells like human stuff or food into that bag. Get it away from your campsite so that bears or other animals that are looking for food who smell uh, things that they haven't smelled before. They stay away from your campsite. Uh, this is a trowel that I bring if I have to go to the bathroom in the woods. Uh, I'll leave that to your imagination. I also bring uh, a knife. It's important to bring a knife. Do you need a knife necessarily of this size? Uh, no, this is my Falkniv A1 survival knife. Uh, really happy with that blade. Um, bring a smaller pocket knife. I carry this in my backpack. Bring a pocket knife. Uh, the main reason I bring this is to actually process wood to start a fire, and I use it in conjunction with this folding saw here. So if you find a dead tree that is still standing, that is about maybe this thick, you can saw it down with this, and then saw it into smaller pieces, and then use this uh, and actually baton the wood. You get a thick, heavy branch, and you can use this and whack on the edge of the knife and actually kind of use it like an axe to split down wood into kindling that will be dry, even if it's raining out, because the wood inside of the dead tree will be dry and you can make a fire. Now, do I make a fire each time I go out on the Appalachian Trail? No, it's just good to have the option in case I get wet, my equipment gets wet, it's cold, need some way to stay warm and dry out. It's just good to have the option to do that. Um, and I don't always do that though. Uh, in keeping with the idea of leave no trace, you don't want to go out there each time, in my opinion, and be banging um, your knife against wood and chopping things down and leaving a bunch of wood that you didn't use next to your campsite. So it's mainly something I bring in case of an emergency. Um, this is a small survival kit that I bring. I carry in my pocket and it has things like a whistle, a lighter, a small compass here. You can't see it. Some kindling. I also have a fire starting kit that I bring. And this has some cotton balls soaked in Vaseline, which make pretty good kindling. And I have some trioxane here. This is a fuel that will ignite with a match or a lighter. So plenty of ways to start a fire if you need one. I also bring another water filter, a first aid kit some trash bags that I use to put um, food wrappers in or other things that are dirty that I want to throw away, and a compass and a map uh, that has all of the locations on the Appalachian Trail right in here. So that's kind of an overview of everything else that I bring that's pretty important. Um, I'm definitely not an ultralight hiker. I might bring more equipment than I actually need, but it makes me feel prepared 
and particularly since I go out alone, I definitely want to be equipped for whatever contingency might arise. Okay, so if you're wondering what this actually looks like when I'm wearing it, here you can see a uh, pretty big backpack. It might look to some like I'm a Sherpa uh, helping an expedition climb K2, but I go out well prepared. So this is the size of the pack when I am actually wearing it. Well, that's it, folks. I appreciate your taking the time to watch this, and I'm really excited to get out there this winter and take some video out in the field to show you what it's like to go out on the Appalachian Trail. So stay tuned. There's going to be more content on here, and I look forward to it.